Now, is the Ultimate Split Air HVAC worth the price? I spent two years thinking about this system. Now, primarily because I didn't have the money, so I used that time to design and redesign until I figured out what I wanted. Now, I'm a general contractor and I wanted the best system that I can think of. Now, our system came out to be around $40,000 and that was one of the lower prices I got. It was installed by Precision Air in Encinitas, California. Our system was around $29 per square foot. Now, let me give you what that can compare to. A typical HVAC is around $10 to $14 per square foot. Now, it really comes down to pay now or pay later. If you buy a less efficient unit, it's going to cost the owner much more over time to run versus just paying for it up front. So I decided to be comfortable and use my system and, and pay for it at the beginning. We ended up choosing Mitsubishi and instead of getting the wall hung units, we ended up getting the uh, ceiling mounted cassettes and that was er in every room. We even did the garage. And yes, it would have been cheaper to do the wall hung units, but I didn't like the looks of the wall hung units. Uh, so we ended up going all with the ceiling mounted. So added a very large energy recovery ventilator, an ERV, throughout the main house. Now I say the main house, but our home is split up into two sections. Uh, it's only 1,400 square feet, but 400 of that we made an ADU. So my wife and I are living in the 1,000 square feet, and the uh, ADU is on its own separate Mitsubishi system, which is just a regular system with two heads. I just know that Mitsubishi units work well and they last a long time. Now for conventional systems, now I'm not sure which would be a good system. I mostly did commercial projects, so I'm not an expert in residential uh, HVAC. Our goal was to have a comfortable and efficient home. The first thing we did was vacuum out the attic and get rid of the old insulation with all the rat turds. Next, we sealed all the penetrations between the ceiling and the attic. We used spray foam to seal around all the uh, penetrations, but in hindsight, I should have used the Prosecor Air Dam. It's more of a caulking product. It would have probably gave us a better R value and sealant. We, in, we had an insulation in the ceiling and the walls. It was the, uh, that rock wool insulation. And then we ended up putting a thermal break between the studs and the exterior of the house. We did this with the Huber uh, R system sheeting. It's um, OSB plywood with waterproofing on it and then a sheet of uh, closed cell foam. So that creates a thermal break between the exterior and the studs. Next, we upgraded all the windows. That we actually, we, ended, we did the windows and doors. And to install these, to go with the same system, we used the liquid uh, zip system, liquid flashing. And we, we primarily did that on the west end of the house because that was where our heat was coming in. So we did liquid flashing on that whole, everything from around the windows, the doors, to the uh, foundation. And then in the back of the house, which is the east side, we uh, it wasn't so bad. It's good shading. So we used the Huber zip tape around the windows, but we still use the liquid applied flashing at the foundation. Now, running air conditioning is uh, pretty pricey. So I would say before we did the H HVAC, we went and got Tesla solar uh, panels we put on the roof and we have power walls. In fact, before the air conditioning system, we were net zero. But unfortunately, I don't have enough panels or panel space on the, on the roof. So I'm not able to uh, maintain that net zero because of the uh, ERVs and the uh, HVAC. So we're going to add some more solar panels. We have a Cybertruck coming and I'll use that for extra batteries to support the house with, uh, excuse me, vehicle to grid uh, electricity. So basically our backup generator, we, we have the power walls, but even to go even further or longer, uh, we can use the car to back up the house. Uh, now the HVAC, you know, after we did all the uh, thermal value and the efficiencies, the HVAC was really just the cherry on top. You know, what good is it if you can't afford to run it? You know, 
we need to make sure that it, uh, it's efficient to use. Trying to, trying to control the temperature in a leaking house is a losing battle and expensive. The idea behind the HVAC was that we can only condition the rooms that we were going to be in. Now the, the main Mitsubishi unit is a variable frequency heat pump, which means it's not running full board all the time. It only runs on the load that you put on it. So if I'm running uh, one room, it's very low. If I start adding rooms to it, it ramps up. So that works out really good for efficiency. It's not like uh, the old kind of HVAC units where they're either off or on. I mean, those old HVAC units it's like giving a three-year-old and showing them a light switch for the first time. They just flick on and off and on and off and on and off to get you that temperature. Where with Mitsubishi, it's a constant nice temperature. Uh, it, it, light here is better than a conventional system. Now, we have been with our system with over a year. And there are a few things I would have changed. This time, I wouldn't have gone with ceiling cassettes in each of the rooms. Since the house is really small, I, you know, thinking back, I should have gone with uh, these uh, SEZ series of Mitsubishi. And that's a Sam Edward Xylophone uh, System SEZ. They're like independent air handlers, but you can put ducts on them so that you can really just put like air conditioning in certain rooms. And that would be a zone air conditioning in the like kitchen and, and living room. That could be a zone. Uh, so that would have been a probably better way of going about and doing what we did on our house. Uh, but they even have an SVZ and that's, that looks exactly like your whole house, uh, air handling unit. And everybody usually has this big box in their house that their heater attaches to. And then the, the coil would attach to the top of the box. And then your air would flow into your house from there. Uh, so they have units where you can put, you can retrofit uh, a house with uh, heat pumps. And, uh, you know, I highly recommend the heat pump. Now, I also went a little nuts with the uh, thermostats. Uh, I didn't really care for having the thermostats just as remotes. Uh, that's what it usually with the, uh, ceiling cassettes and the, uh, wall mounted, they have these little, um, oh, well, I got one here. They have these little, uh, units that control the, uh, the ceiling cassette. And I don't really, I didn't really like them so much. So every single room has a long hung thermostat that I put in each room in the wall. And, uh, for one, I know where it is all the time. And two, I think it does a better job because uh, that's what the thermostat is. That's where the thermostat is reading the temperature of the room. So I did the wireless remotes and the the wall hung units. I think you could do away with the wireless remotes. Uh, it, you know, the thermostat is in there and the remotes. So wherever you put it and you can, if you let's say you put it in a, near a window and you're in the rest of the house, it's going to be cold because it's going to compensate for that heat wherever you set that down. Where the thermostat was up on the wall and it's really giving you a good reading of, of the temperature, the ambient temperature. Also did, uh, like in commercial, your air conditioning is controlled with a computer. So they can tell you it's going to go on at this time. It's going to go off at this time. It's going to have a temperature of this and this. So I did the Mitsubishi Wi-Fi links and I added that to all the units and that way I could control it on my phone like you can do in a commercial space. And I love that because in San Diego, the temperature, and I, I know you guys are all going to start throwing tomatoes at me, but uh, it's, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice most of the time. And even in our winter time, uh, it, it doesn't really get that cold. So I have the heater coming on at 9 a.m. in the morning. I know I have the heater coming on at five o'clock in the morning till 9 a.m. And then I have the air conditioning coming on from 9 a.m. to five. And then it switches again. So I can, I can really control the whole system. And I also control what rooms come on and which don't come on. So basically like during the day, I only really have my office 
the air conditioning in my office on and the living room and that's it. And then at night, uh, everything comes on for about three hours and then it shuts back down. And then only the bedroom is on from uh, the time we go to bed till the time we wake up. Set the temperature in the bedroom just to 68 degrees, just the one room I'm paying for, not the whole house. And uh, you know, that worked out pretty good. It's nice to have that control over your system. I, I hope that uh, Mitsubishi starts incorporating like uh, HomeKit or you know whatever you're using uh, for your house, if you're doing a smart house. Uh, it would be nice if it integrated into that but it doesn't do that yet. So once in a while I get people or other professionals asking me about my system and uh, they ask about the ERV and I have to explain to them that uh, we kind of created a passive house environment in our house. Uh, passive house is a way of saying like an energy efficient uh, house. So our house is kind of sealed up so that ERV is really needed. You really can't do um, excuse me, you really can't do that kind of system without having fresh air being brought in and taken out. You're almost sealing yourself up like you're living in a bubble. Now there are a bunch of downsides, like having the split air cassette in a small room. Uh, these rooms are really small. I don't know how in 1963, these people must've been really small, but, uh, the problem is uh, that the BTUs in the units, the, the lower, the lowest it goes is still oversized for the room. So the cold air doesn't feel that great when it's blown directly on you. Uh, the, the, the heat's fine, but the cold, you know, it, it kind of blows right on you. And some people have asked me why I put a, a ceiling cassette in the garage. Well, it's because we have electric vehicles and I like to take care of the cars. We clean them inside and out pretty often. Uh, so I like to be comfortable while I'm doing it, you know, if it's hot i put the air conditioning on cold heat hope you enjoyed watching the video and i hope it helped you uh, if you have any questions or comments please leave them below